How can we be made right with God? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. A man with a nagging secret was unable to keep it any longer. He went to confessional and admitted that for years he had been stealing building supplies from the lumber yard where he worked. How much lumber did you take? The priest asked. I took enough to build my home and enough for my son's house. Then I took enough to build houses for my two daughters. Oh, and our house at the lake. This is a very serious offense, the priest said. I'll have to think of a far-reaching penance. Have you ever considered doing a retreat? No, Father, I never have, the man replied. But if you can get the plants, I can get the lumber. In today's first reading, St. Paul tells us how a person becomes right in God's eyes, and that is through faith. During his time, there were Christians who were advocating for a return to the Mosaic Law. Proof of this was their insistence that Gentiles or pagans be circumcised. Paul, who was a Pharisee and a circumcised Jew, rejected this idea. We reflect today on what we need to be right in God's eyes. God's goodness and love is given to all regardless of race or belief. There is no more distinction because all are sinners and lack God's grace. Only His grace can set us free. It is an act of spontaneous love for all of God's creation that we who receive it must pass on to others. 1 John tells us, This is what love is. It is not that we have loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the means by which our sins are forgiven. This act of love on God's part was exemplified by sending us His Son as a gift to restore to us His divine favors. When we are put right with God, we can inherit eternal life. What is asked of us only is to surrender our total faith and trust in God. Our own actions will not be enough to merit salvation. God is not indebted to us in any way we do good. Recall the Pharisee who stood before the altar of God, telling him how righteous he has been. Beside him was a tax collector who humbly acknowledged his sins and begged for God's forgiveness. Salvation then is not so much doing good works, but having an intimate relationship with God. Again, recall the sinful woman who washes Jesus' feet. Jesus tells the observing Simon, she loves much because her sins have been forgiven. Jesus did not say she was forgiven because she loves much. Clearly, it is not so much our good works that will bring us to heaven. God loves us not because we are pious, we give to charity, neither does He love us simply because we call upon His name. The good works we do has been prompted by our openness to let God's grace work in us. Certainly, faith without good works is dead. When our hearts are aright with God, the good we do is His love flowing into our veins and straight into our actions. We become more understanding towards others, more giving and forgiving, more loving and patient, more generous and kind. God loves us not on account of our being good, our being good is a testament to our letting God's love to work in us and through us. Our good behavior is the manifestation of our faith, our surrender of our whole being, that humility to acknowledge that we succeed not because of our own strength, but because of God's grace. We may lumber along in our life unable to comprehend its mysteries. We may build our successes through means which are not in consonance with God's commandments but there will always be opportunities to be convicted and transformed. For we can be comforted with the thought that because God loves us, redemption is possible. When we decide to retreat from our sinful ways, humbly ask Him for forgiveness and set out to right the wrongs we have done. When that happens, our interior transformation through God's grace will clearly manifest in the good we do for Him through the love we give to others. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, may your word take root in my heart to transform all my thoughts and actions. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.